When growing up, identity was something I had in abundance. Born in the Netherlands to a Dutch mother and an Iranian father, I maneuvered myself through, at times, clashing different cultural contexts to adulthood. And when entering the chapter of motherhood by giving birth to my three sons, not all at once, I might add, my only worry as a mother at that fragile start of their lives was whether I was producing enough milk and whether they were kept warm enough. Their undeniable existence on this earth was automatically acknowledged by three birth registrations, being Dutch, Iranian, and Egyptian through their father's nationality. My children's legal identities were granted, and thereby their inclusion into society as well. But what if you do not have an identity at all? A staggering 290 million children in today's world do not have any form of legal identity. And that makes these children invisible. Invisible to the system, invisible to society, and condemned to a life of isolation. Now, 290 million, that's more than the entire population of Brazil, and it's eight times the size of Morocco's population. Now, if you come to think about it, your identity is your access to society. It's your access to education, it's your access to health services, it's your access to justice, and so much more. Now, if you let these numbers sink in, 50% of all children born in Africa do not have a birth certificate. Indonesia alone counts 24 million undocumented children, and every 10 minutes, a Syrian child is born within a refugee context with little to no hope of ever receiving a formal registration of its existence. Now, if you're a family, for instance, living in a remote village in, let's say, East Nusa Tenggara, Indonesia, the logistical barriers of, not, of having your child registered are a very valid reason not to, let alone the $2 registration fee in comparison to your $30 monthly income. Because if you're a family with six children and baby number seven comes along, how would you rather spend those $2? Now, the reasons and the, ba the barriers for not registering these babies are perfectly understandable, but this baby number seven, just like his siblings or her siblings, will most likely face a life of obstacles and many, many bribery payments to avoid having to show his non-existent birth certificate. Or for a five-year-old boy born in a Lebanese refugee camp, returning to his parents' home country, Syria, will be the start of a life marked by social exclusion. Why? Simply because the Syrian government does not acknowledge his existence. Now, his lack of legal identity will impact his ability to claim basic rights and protection and will most likely endanger his access to education. Now, you hear me mentioning a Syrian boy, but this could just as well be a little girl from Venezuela in a few years from now. Or a 14-year-old girl living in Uganda. For her, a birth certificate attesting to her true age could be her escape from an illegal marriage, preventing her to fall victim to, or at least preventing her to uh, end up like 40% of all young girls in Uganda were married off into illegal marriages before reaching the, the legal age for marriage, which is set at 18. Now, the consequences of not having a birth certificate as an adult 
become painfully apparent when I share with you the personal story of my co-founder and dear friend, Te Al Rajula, who spent more than three years in the Netherlands working as an ICT specialist, living the good Dutch life, paying lots of taxes, as we do in the Netherlands, and enjoying uh, football matches at the local stadium during the weekends, but found himself condemned to living the life of an invisible man. You see, Tay was born in Kuwait to Syrian parents, and his birth certificate got destroyed during the Gulf War. When his visa was about to expire, his Dutch attorney advised him to report himself to the Dutch Asylum Seeker Center, or refugee camp, if you may, where he despite the somewhat optimistic prediction of his attorney, did not spend a couple of days awaiting the outcome of his procedure, but ended up spending more than two years in refugee camps in the Netherlands. During these years, at these multiple refugee camps throughout the Netherlands, where he was placed and replaced, he was confronted with the gravity and the magnitude of the problems related to traditional paper-based identification mechanisms. He encountered hundreds and hundreds of refugees, among them being families, young adults, engineers, doctors, one of them being a brilliant Syrian heart surgeon who was Tay's roommate at some point. All people who, simply because they were not able to verify the authenticity of their documents or certify their credentials, simply lost their entry tickets into society. Now, Tay realized that had his birth certificate at some point been stored in, let's say, a digital safe, he never would have found himself trapped in this predicament. So it was there and then, in that tiny shared room, in that refugee camp, that he decided that life shouldn't be at the whim of losing a piece of paper. So there he was, sitting in that tiny room, an ICT specialist, with the only belonging he was allowed to keep, and that was his mobile phone. And that mobile phone was his access to the outside world and the world of blockchain development. And from that tiny room in the refugee center, Tay developed a technical solution based on intelligent blockchain implementation that allows for resilient digital identities and an ecosystem of social inclusion. Now, combining these technological advancements with an intrinsic drive and passion to advance the lives of these invisible children is what made us found Zinc Foundation. Zinc stands for Zero Invisible Children, which unequivocally echoes our big, hairy, audacious goal, which is a world in which every child is granted a legal identity. Because a legal identity shouldn't be a privilege, it is a basic human right. So how do we plan on doing this? By leveraging blockchain technology, we are able to register the identity of these children permanently in a secure way. And I realize that the term blockchain is used and abused frequently, but our solution does not entail open source registry and is thus not open to abuse. Now, we are firm believers that technology itself does not change lives. But if you have people taking that technology and using that to make a positive impact, then it does have the power to change lives. So here we are, we have this uh, technical solution, but how do we reach these mothers and children? Worldwide, if a mother is about to deliver, who is there to help her and to ass assist her? It's the midwife. And that is why we aim to equip midwives with an easy-to-use device with a mobile app registration that allows for an initial registration and secure identity for that child. So imagine there's a mother in a refugee camp, and instead of her giving birth to an invisible child, the midwife 
holds within her medical kit an easy to use device with this app that allows for a secure registration of this child's identity that no one can take away from this child. Which is in fact in line with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. Because frankly speaking, everyone's speaking about the UN SDGs, but there's one target that is highly underrated. And that's target 16.9, which stands for a legal identity for all. Because we believe that by addressing 16.9, it's like tackling a root cause, which will have a positive spillover effect on other identified issues such as inequality, poverty, and hunger, and also preventing these children to fall victim to practices such as organ trading and child trafficking and abuse. Now, we do not want to wait until 2030. We want to speed things up. And because on the one hand, we live in a world in which technological developments take place in such a rapid pace, but on the other hand, there are still hundreds and hundreds of millions of children who are being denied this fundamental human right. Now, we have embarked on a mission that entails knocking on doors, joining forces with other NGOs and local communities, and speaking to governments to adopt this solution, and simply raising awareness about this issue. Today, I stand in front of you as the co-founder of Zinc Foundation, but more importantly, as a mother, asking you to join us on our mission to turn these invisible children into invincible ones. Thank you very much. <clears throat>